Many years ago, somewhere between the origins of life with single-celled organisms and TikTok, I had my first job. And my boss sat me down and said, we need a website, can you make one? So I said, okay. And I didn't know what to do. So I went to a popular search engine and said, make a website. The website turned out quite well, but being honest, we probably overspent in some places and maybe with some hindsight, we made some decisions that we wouldn't do now. My name is Sean Miller and many years later, I now work with organizations, large, ambitious and fast growing to work out how to get the most from their web presence. I had an agency called Codehouse based in the UK, Sri Lanka and Australia. A question we get asked a lot is how much is a website? And it's a great question because in true politician style, we will say, it depends. How much is a piece of string? Well, of course it depends on how long it is and what material it is and what colour it is and how thick it is and if it ever so touched it. But it reminds us of this famous quote from Andy Warhol's 1975 book, and you'll excuse the impression. You can be watching TV and see Coca-Cola and you know that the president drinks Coke, Liz Taylor drinks Coke, and just think, you can drink Coke too. A Coke is a Coke, and no amount of money can get you a better Coke. So it's easy to ask the price of a can of Coke, but not so easy to ask the price of a website, because as we will find out, a website can vary so differently from being a single page with just some text on it through to a sophisticated platform such as Facebook or Slack. So let's imagine it's a beautiful sunny day and you're about to start your new job at a restaurant that's just about to open for the first time. And your boss says, we need a website, can you make one? And the question you would ask then would be, do we have a budget to make this new website? And as you may have experienced, often the answer is, we're not sure. Can you find out how much it's gonna to cost to make the website? And so as the person responsible for now creating the site, we have to find out how long that piece of string is. In other words, what are the real needs of our stakeholder and the business? Based on what we know so far, all the restaurant might need is a simple website that includes some information about their address and opening hours. So it may be possible to produce the website ourselves using a DIY tool such as Squarespace or Wix. And that probably would come to only about £40 to have a live functioning website. Oh look, we seem to be going through some sort of wormhole. And it's a beautiful day again. And now the boss has said, we need to edit the menu daily. Let's pause right there, because this is the perfect time to introduce our first website cost lever. The content management system, or CMS, as we all know, is the tool that will allow anyone with access, of course, to edit content on the website without requiring a developer. But when thinking about the cost of a CMS, there's a couple of things to consider. First, there's open source CMSs like WordPress or Embraco, and there are proprietary ones developed and managed by companies like Sitecore or Contentful. Open source has its advantages because they're typically free to start using and they've had lots of people contributing to them over time so you can find all kinds of plugins. But the downside is that the too many chefs approach can mean your website can become a dog's dinner made up of plugins with varying compatibility. And in some cases, open source CMSs are seen as being more vulnerable to malicious cyber attacks. Proprietary CMSs, on the other hand, often have a SaaS license fee for using the platform. Often the tooling provided is seen to be more robust and the companies managing the CMS is seen to be more responsive to fixing any bugs that occur as they have full-time developers working to constantly improve their platforms. Another thing to be aware of is that the more popular a CMS is, it attracts more developers to work on it and offer their services to companies wanting to build on that CMS. And sometimes that means where there are fewer developers, they are able to command slightly higher prices for their services. Of course, this alone shouldn't be the reason for making a decision about a CMS, as if you're a large organization, you may not want to be using a popular mass market platform. So coming back to the boss's requirement to be able to edit the menu daily, at the very cheapest end of the market, you might be able to create the site for about £400. The site will still be quite basic, and the amount of customization might only be able to take an existing template and change the color palette of the website. There's that wormhole again! 
We need to accept bookings online, said the boss. Wait, before we answer that, let's introduce the second website cost lever, bespokeness. Creating a website is like buying a suit or a dress. You can buy something off the shelf with a generic size that should roughly match to your body, but there's no real guarantee of fit. This is the cheapest option. The second option you have is to get a made-to-measure suit. That's when your suit or dress is pretty much an off-the-shelf item that can be adjusted to your tastes and body shape. It costs quite a bit more than an off-the-shelf item, but the outcome you get is a much better fit for your needs. The third option is bespoke. You can walk down Savile Row to find a tailor who will create the perfect suit or dress from the ground up that will fit like a glove. And the cost will be reflective of this level of bespokeness. The only downside of this approach is that unlike off-the-shelf items built in a factory, which have undergone rigorous quality control and have had any flaws ironed out before it reaches you, with a bespoke item, you are the first person to experience it and inevitably you may have to iron out some of those issues that are unique to your one-of-a-kind item. That's enough on suits. So to solve the boss's requirement, rather than creating something from scratch, we can easily find off-the-shelf solutions that will allow us to take bookings. And we just have to decide how we integrate that solution into our website. From having a simple link on our website homepage to go to the booking tool's separate website, or integrating the functionality using a simple iframe or with quite a bit more work using their API. So when thinking about the cost of your website, we will take into account the costs associated with the CMS and think about what out of the box OTB functionality exists and what hosting might look like. And for functionality requirements, we need to be aware of its level of complexity and how bespoke our solution needs to be versus something that can just be modified. And then all of this is multiplied by the rates charged by the developers that actually create the solution. With a very lean approach to this, it could cost around £4,000. Wormhole. It seems like the restaurant has grown a lot. Now they are a regional chain and they need their branches to be able to manage some content on the website, but they mustn't have access beyond what they actually need. As an organisation grows, stakeholder management is key. What was a simple website now needs to serve multiple people across different locations and without some care, this could become chaotic. So that's our third website cost lever, governance. We sometimes say to organisations at this stage in their journey that building a website was just building a website, it would be easy. But a key aspect of delivering a successful website is making sure everyone is aligned and empowered. So it could be helpful to have an agency partner that is experienced in managing this type of transformation. To deliver the boss's requirements, the branch managers will be given access to the CMS, but only to the pages that are relevant to them. And their content may go through a publishing workflow so that it can be approved by you or the boss before it goes live. So this might cost £40,000, but of course it depends on the other decisions that will need to be made to deliver the website. I see we're going back through the wormhole again. Who is doing this to us? The once regional restaurant chain has expanded internationally by franchising, very smart, and they need to maintain consistency across their global presence in all languages. This sounds similar to the previous requirement the boss gave us, but this time it's more complicated as each of those international franchisees may have their own website to manage and on their own domains. Pause. This brings up the important fourth website cost lever, extensibility. Just like building a house, there's two ways to do things. You could start by building a small house, and when you get married and you need a bigger one, you just knock it down and start again from scratch. And when you need an even bigger house because your family has grown, you knock down your house again and you build it again from scratch. Or, right at the start, you dig deep foundations and create a scaffold, so that as your house needs to grow, you can just keep adding on to what you've already built. This approach is costly up front, but in the long run pays dividends. The approach you take depends on what you can reasonably afford to do today 
With respect to the needs you can foresee having in the future, and there's no need to overdo it. Here we go again. Hopefully the last time. The boss wants customers to order food through the website and for those orders to go automatically right to the chefs in the kitchen to prepare their food. And this is where the website gets interesting. Well, it was interesting all along, but now it's really interesting. The boss has identified a key theme of what transforms a website from a cost center performing a marketing task to a value generating machine. The most promising and exciting companies have realized that a website doesn't only belong to the marketing team, but it can be a place to deliver value from all parts of the business, from operations to finance, to all stages of the customer journey, from discovery to delivery. So if we go back to where we started, when the boss required a simple website, we delivered something that was of value to the stage of the business then. But as the company has grown and needs to innovate and develop a value creating machine, the scale of the required investment has grown too, but then so have the potential rewards. So when we think back to our website cost levers, CMS, bespokeness, governance, and extensibility, well, really they're not cost levers, they're value levers. And once we think of them in that way, we can think more strategically how we can invest in these different elements to provide measurable value to our customers and our business. I'm sure you are on just as an exciting journey with your website, and I truly believe with this approach, you can realize the full potential of your website. And as I'm sure you can tell, I'm hugely passionate about this topic, and I would love to help in any way I can. That just leaves me to say, I wish you the most rewarding path on your website journey.